Good morning. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you to Jackie and Katerina. This is my second time uh, doing a Facebook Live on uh, Creative Scrapbooker Magazine. And I do love this magazine so much. And those two are just great. So I am, I am so um, excited to be on this and being able to do a project with you guys this morning. So those of you who don't know me, I am Bonnie Krebs and I am the owner and artist of Art Impressions, Rubber Stamps. Uh, we started in 1987, so I have been doing this for a very long time and I have met the most wonderful people and I just, I love doing this so much. So there are lots of lines in the Art Impressions, uh, on the Art Impressions website, but this is one of my favorites. And so I'm gonna show you how to watercolor. If, uh, if you have done that before, I'm getting my comments set up here so that I can see, um, so I can see the comments on here. So, oh, I see him coming in now. Rebecca, good morning from Fairfield. Hello, Donna Harrison, Jennifer Burwanger. Annie McClellan, thank you so much. Have, have any of you done this before? So, you know, I am also on the Art Impressions Facebook Live, and so I see a lot of people who have done this technique before, but there are a lot that haven't done it before. So if you're brand new, uh, tell me that on here. Also tell me if you're a seasoned veteran and have watched lots of tutorials that I've done. Um, if you're new to this, this is so fun. It is just a blast and it's super, super easy. It's easy to get started. And um, I'm gonna walk you through a really, really simple project. But um, there are lots of places for you to find inspiration and instruction. YouTube, uh, I have done a Watercolor Wednesday. I think uh, this is my fourth year. So there are many, many tutorials on there. And they're also now on Facebook. So I am live on Art Impressions Facebook page the first and third uh, Wednesday of the month. And those will stay archived on there. Hello from Alberta. Hi from Virginia. Hello from Cranbrook. So any of you that are in, um, that are in the uh, Alberta area, you may have had my daughter Kim teaching a class there. She lives in Leduc and has taught classes in Edmonton and in Calgary. So if any of you have taken a class from Kim, Tell me, uh, tell me that on here too. Good morning from Northern Ontario. Hello, Susan, I, you're new to this. Okay, you're gonna love this. It is so fun. Let me just show you what we're gonna be doing. This is the project and I'm gonna show you how to do this little birdhouse, super easy. I mean, it's a matter of one, two, uh, three, four, stamp, four or five stamps. So it doesn't take much to do these projects. This is really a beginner project. And um, actually the difficulty level is the same on all of them. It's just that sometimes you need more stamps. Uh, here is that set that we're gonna be using. So this one comes with the two birdhouses. And let me just show you what the other one looks like. So here's the other birdhouse. So this one, these are both on YouTube. So there are tutorials. And I, I believe this one will stay archived on the, on the Facebook page. Um, so you'll be able to go back and check it out and watch it again. So hello from Massachusetts. Thank you guys so much for joining me. This is so fun. I love, love, love doing these lives because I love being able to answer your questions right away. So if you have questions, I will try to uh, go back and forth from the project so that I can see your questions and I will come back on at the end. So if you have any questions at the end, um, you can uh, stay on and I will answer those questions. So let me just check out my comments here one more time. Um, hello to all of you. Becky, Jane, Marianne, Marianne, Sue, thank you so much for joining me. This is so much fun. Chris, thank you so much. Anybody else new to this? Sue Miller, Twyla Brown, oh, okay, good. I'm a little bit delayed on here, so um, I will catch up with you guys. So are you guys ready to get started? I've got, uh, I've got my stamps ready, I've got my brush. Really, uh, for those of you who are brand new, you really need a, uh, a water-based markers, so like this one. These are Tombows, this is what we sell on our website, but a water-based marker is going to work for this project. A water-based marker, a brush, like this one, this is a simple watercolor brush. This is a size four. 
This is what you need for the majority of projects. And then your stamps. So your stamp set, like this one, and you are ready to go. A palette, one more thing, a palette. I mean, there's not a lot of things that you need. And most of you, if you're crafters, you probably already have a brush and a palette and water-based markers. So you're really, you're in good shape already. So um, I'm gonna switch my camera over so that I can uh, get started on these projects. So bear with me here while I flip this around and try not to cut you guys off. Okay, so let me just get this situated here. It's always a bit tricky to just move everything around. But you know, that's the one thing we deal with when it's live, so we just deal with it. Okay, I think we're ready to go. So let me just get my chair moved over. So here's the project that we're gonna do. And I'll try to hold it up so that you can see uh, the detail as I'm going. Sometimes pro these projects are small, and so the detail kind of gets lost. So I will try to be mindful of that and um, hold this up. So here is that other project. Here's the other one that comes in there. It's so cute. They're both done the same way. There's really no trick to it other than learning how to stamp each one of these little elements. There is a way to stamp it in order to get this watercolor look. And if you're brand new, we do have a tutorial on YouTube. So there are many, many on YouTube, but there is a tutorial on YouTube for beginners. And what it does is kind of walk you through all the basic elements. And here's what... Um, Here's what they are. Here are the two that you would want to start with. This is foliage set and flower set one. These are the first two. And I'm going to be doing the majority of the project with these. So the whole point of this is that you're building a collection and you are adding to the collection as you add stamp sets. So every time you add something new, you're gonna go back and use it with things that you already have. So everything is made to work together. So here's how you start, foliage, flowers. This is really the starting point. And then after this, you could add something like these, you know, this set that is the, um, the birdhouses, like this. You could add something that is um, like a container set, like these, so that you can put things in a container. And there are lots and lots of beginner tutorials on how to do that. So uh, like I said, now is a great time to get these. I mean, the timing of this is just great. So all of these things are on sale. The only thing that's not on sale on our website is our clearance items, and they're already marked way, way down. So everything, accessories, pins, um, blocks, if you don't have blocks, all the stamps, everything is on sale. So these two things we're going to use with our project. So let me put that one aside. This is the one we're gonna do today. This one, by the way, is on YouTube. So if you wanna check out YouTube Art Impressions, just go to our YouTube channel and this one is on there. So if you do love this and wanna see more tutorials, there are lots and lots on YouTube. So here are two, we're gonna use these two. We're gonna use this little filler flower. This is called a filler flower and it's meant to stamp in a repeat and I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're also going to use the vine, this little vine. This is what walks up and around the bird birdhouse. The little tiny grass here, this is what is down in the bottom. This is what kind of finishes things off. So those two for sure. And then also, um, this little flower right here in this flower set, that is this one here. Now there are lots and lots of flower sets. There are many, so you can use anything. So the whole point of this too is that because I pick this one, doesn't mean you can't use this one or this one or these, you know, or these. There are just, there are lots and lots of different ones or these, you know, any of these are going to work. This is more foliage for vines. You can change that out. Here's another one. So there are a lot of options. If you buy one flower and foliage set, you're really good to start. And that's why the first two are really, really important to start with. So I'm gonna use this long stem flower and this little branch, just for detail. Now the little birds come in the set. So we're gonna do those little birds too. These little guys, so we're gonna use this one, 
and this one right here. So these little guys come with this. And if you look at the packaging, you can see here's the sample, but there's no foliage in here. Here's what you're actually getting in the package. And the reason is because we kind of assume you already have this. This is that vine. This is from the two basic sets, the flowers and the foliage set. So that's why it's not included, or we would just be giving you vines and vines and vines and flowers and, and um, grasses that you don't need. So everything is sort of made to work that way. Okay, all that being said, let's get started on our project. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is stamp that image. And I've put it onto a acrylic block like this one, and I'm going to ink it up. And I'm gonna ink it in two colors. So this is really important, how you start out. You're going to start out with a dark brown, and then you're gonna ink over the top with a blue, a dark blue. Now this is a number 969 and a number 565. Now if you're using Marvies, we have a conversion chart on our website. So you can go to artimpressions.com and get the conversion chart from Marvy to Tombow or Tombow to Marvy. So I'm giving you a 969, Tombow, but you can see what that is uh, from Marvy. Okay, so um, uh, Marvy just happens to be a really, really popular line of markers, and that's actually what I started out with. And now I've moved to Tombow's, and I love these just as much. Okay, so we're gonna ink this with two colors. The reason we do that is to get a mix of color. The whole point of this is that you end up with a watercolor painting, not a stamped image. It's a, it's a, there's a big difference be trying to, between trying to stamp a really pretty floral and trying to get a watercolor um, image that works together and looks like a painting. And that's what we're trying to get here. So we're using two colors so that we have a mix of color. A single gray, which is what these two create, is too one dimensional. You're gonna get a much better effect if you do it this way. So I'm gonna start out with that dark brown and I'm just gonna use the side of my marker. And I'm going to go right over the top of it with my dark blue, right over the top. So I'm actually inking this in two colors. And now I'm going to stamp it off because I don't want it to be too dark. That's way too dark. And when you're doing this technique, you want a light touch, just a light touch like just you're just pressing it onto the paper. This is what we want. So that is a lot different than this. So see the difference here? You want this to be very light. You wanna be able to see those lines and be able to pull that color out, but you don't want a, a, um, a line. You don't want things to be outlined um, in your composition. So now we're gonna dip our brush in water. So I have plain water here, and I'll try to keep it into the screen. and I'm gonna dip my brush in water and pinch it off. Now, when you first start out, you're gonna really saturate your brush, get it really wet, and then you're going to pinch it off so that it's flat. See how flat that brush is? Really, really flat. Don't worry about the point because it will come back as soon as you start working with it. So once we've done that, and by the way, now every time you dip your brush, it's only the tip. It's just the tip. It's not the whole, it's not the whole thing like this. It's only the tip just the tip. Otherwise, you're gonna to get too much water on your brush, so just the tip, and then always pinch it off. Always pinch it off. And now we're going to go along the lines. So you're actually, you're not coloring over the top of the lines, you're going next to the line. And what that does is it drags the color out. And let me hold this up so that you can see. See how that pops this this little um, decorative board up and see the difference here. This is flat and this one has, has come up. So now you can you know turn your paper however you, you wanna do it so you're most comfortable, but you're following next to the line. I can't stress how important that is. See how that brings that up? If you take your brush and you just trace along the line, you're gonna get a big thick line. You're just gonna get a big thick brown line. So it's really important to go next next to these lines and that will bring these things forward. See these little, all these little areas in here, you're going next to, next to those lines. 
It's so fun. And, you know, once you understand how to do it, then it's just really relaxing. You know, the stress is kind of taken away and you know how to stamp these things and it's just so much fun. Okay, so see how that already looks three-dimensional and especially when you put it next to uh, the other one that we stamped. See how flat this is? But, e but just this one step of pulling the color out of the lines really, really, uh, really, really changes things. So then in here, we're gonna come next to these lines. And this is always the first step. You know, when you're doing any project, you wanna start out with the basic image, whatever it is. In this case, it's the birdhouse. And you're going to pull the color um, out of the lines, just like that. Okay, that's the first step. The second step now is to add our foliage and our flowers to it. So I'm going to do that with a green now. This is a 177, doesn't matter which green you use. Um, it could be any. And I'm going to ink this stamp. Now here's the reason that we use markers. So if you have water-based ink pads, you certainly can use those. The ink is the same, it's going to work great. The problem is, is that the majority of the time we're either using two colors on the stamp or we're using either a uh, part of the stamp. So that's why the markers, because uh, the majority of, time, of the time, you're just inking the area that you want to use. So in this case, this stamp is kind of shaped like an S. It has a lot of purposes. In this case, crawling up this little post, we're only going to use the C part. So the top two thirds of this stamp. A lot of times we'll use just the tip. So I'm just going to ink this, not the whole thing, and I'm going to stamp it on my post and make sure that I'm stamping it more than one time. So here's the thing about stamping these flowers and these foliages. You want to go one, two, three, four, five. If you can get five impressions in there, that's really good. That's also the way to test your markers. So if you have water-based markers at home and you're not sure if they're gonna work, if you can get, if you can ink it one time and you can get five impressions, it's gonna be fine. They're gonna be fine, they're plenty wet enough. So the difference is this, if you just stamp it like this and kind of walk it up the post, uh, it's fine but it's not going to give us the look that we're looking for, like this will. Now, when we go to add water to this, that dark impression, that's going to come forward. And these light ones, they're going to fade back. And that's how we're going to get this watercolor look. I mean, there's just nothing to it. Now, in this case, I just used the tip. I just wanted to get some of this down into the bottom of the post. And I'm just going to go up again now. And I got a little of this, this ink on here. That doesn't matter at all because it's just going to all blend. And I can just come over here and then maybe bring some back over here. And then maybe just put a couple over here. So we can see that vine kind of growing up around the post. Really at this point, it looks kind of messy. So never panic at this stage because it's all going to come together. Now we're gonna dip our brush in water, pinch it off. That's the routine, just pinch it off and dab. So no brush strokes. We're not actually painting anything. We're just softening what we just stamped and it will just do its thing. The light, the light impressions will fade back and the dark ones will come forward and you will have a three-dimensional image. It just works, it's kind of like magic. This is another reason that we stamp things really lightly is so we can stamp over the top, like this one. You know, these light lines, they'll just get absorbed. They'll just get washed out uh, with the brush and you won't see them. You could take some of this color now from the roof and kind of drag it to the outside. If you like that really uh, soft watercolor look, 
you can pull the color to the outside and create sort of a halo effect. See how that all comes together? And you would, the, the coolest thing about this, you guys, is that nobody would ever know it's stamped. They just would never know because it looks nothing like, it looks nothing like this. By the time you get the water and stuff in it and all the florals, I mean, it's changed so much that nobody would ever guess and nor do they have to know. You just say, well, you don't know everything about me and yes, I'm a watercolorist. And you also don't have to tell them that these things take like literally five minutes. But they're so fun to give away and people just love them so much. Uh, you can put them in a frame. You don't have to just put them on a card. Okay, so now let's go on to the next step. And that is the flowers. So let's get these in. Here's that little, you can see how well loved this is. I mean, I use these stamps all the time. And these were the very first ones that's kind of started this technique. And they're still here. And they're still in, <laughs> they're in almost every set um, that I come out with because I just love them so much. So I'm going to now ink this one up. And by the way, you can use parts of this too. So maybe you just want a small bloom like this one. You can just ink those too. But let me show you this one also. You can't uh, stamp it in like this. It's just, it's too uniform. It doesn't have any depth. It's just not gonna work. And like I said, it's fine. There's nothing really wrong with it, but it looks like a stamped image. And we're going for a watercolor painting. So here's what you want. You want one, two, three, four, five in a circle. And you see, it's the same idea. The dark comes forward, the light fades back. And when you go to add water to that, that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna get a three-dimensional image. So let's do it. One, two, three, four, five. Smaller one. One, two, three, four, five. Another one. One, two, three, four, five. And you can just put this uh, wherever you want. As long as you are stamping it multiple times, you want to be sure and get it in there multiple times. That is the that is so important. So now guess what we're gonna do? Dip our brush, pinch it off, and dab. Pinch it off and just dab. No brush strokes. You're not painting, you're just touching it and letting the water and the stamps do their work. So, so far we've used three stamps and two from the basic set. Okay, so now let's get some color in here and we're gonna use this little guy. So here's that one from that uh, the long stem from that one set, and I'm gonna use something bright. Now, here again is the idea of the markers. So we're gonna use two colors on this. So you can see the bloom is one color, the stem is another. And not only is the stem another color, but you can ink as much of it as you want, or none. Maybe you just want the bloom. Maybe you just want the bloom into uh, the foliage like this. It's sort of connected to the foliage. Or maybe you want a longer stem like this one and to see the leaves. So let's do this one. So whatever part you want, now I don't need the whole stem on this. I don't need that, need it to be that long. And see again, I'm stamping it more than one time. And then let's put this on here and let's just do maybe one more, a couple more. I mean, there's almost no way to mess up. You know what I would suggest you do if you're brand new, get a big sheet of watercolor paper and practice stamping these elements, the vine, that filler flower, the grasses, practice stamping all those things until you kind of get it down, how much water to use, and then uh, you're good to go. Now we're gonna add water to these and we're just gonna kind of touch it. 
And this also changes the shape of the bloom so that you can't tell, you can't tell that it's stamped. And you know, you have, you have some color on your brush, so if you wanna fan these out a little bit, you can do that. So fun. So let's put another little detail in here, this little branch. I love this little thing. I think it just adds a ton and you can put as much of it in as you want. So now let's add the grass down to the bottom. Here's that little grass. Now this one too. This has a specific way of stamping. Uh, again, you never want to just stamp it once like this. Um, it's just, it's never going to look right. And if you try to put it into a composition like that, uh, it's, I mean, it's fine, but it's not going to give you the watercolor look. Here's the way it's meant to stamp. Walked, one, two, three, four, five. On top of itself, on top of itself and over to the side because now it can go up, it can go down, you can go the other direction, you can use part, and you can make it taller. So it's really, really versatile. This, if you try to turn it and go down, I mean, it's just, it's not going to, it's just not gonna work. So it's made to stamp like this. And now when you add the water to it, again, it's going to give you that mix of color. And this is the only time you use a brush stroke is when you're doing the grass and you wanna come up and out like that, just up and out. And again, that's gonna make it look way more uh, natural. Now these tips, you know, on how to stamp these things, it's all in that beginner tutorial on YouTube. It's just, it's called the introduction to watercolor stamping and it kind of walks you through all these things. So back and forth. So here's another, and you can just keep going. And see how much more natural that is? It's just so much more natural to see the grass like this. And then when you go to add the water to it, um, it's just, it's so cute. You can drag some of this color out underneath it. Okay, so let's pay attention now to the little birdhouse. And we're gonna add some color onto here a little bit, and then we'll do the birds. So we're going to uh, get a palette out. And this is the palette. It's just a piece of um, plexiglass, white. So uh, it's very inexpensive. We have these on our website. This is a great investment. Hello, Renee, how are you? Wow, you guys, this is so great. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, I'm going to add some color now to my palette. This is the 565, so this is that dark blue that we started out with. It's real cool blue. It's almost got a little purple in it. And we're going to also add some color now to the roof. So I just decided to kind of mix it up a little bit and make the roof green. Now, when you're adding color, you wanna stay in each section. So see all these little sections on the roof? You don't wanna drag your brush down over those lines. You wanna just do each section at a time. And try to leave some little white spaces if you can. It's just going to look a lot more natural. And again, this is all about trying to get a watercolor painting. See how much difference that makes. It really, really does. It makes a huge difference. Okay, so now let's take some of this blue. And we're going to add some to these little openings. Now, you see the openings? Do you see the little line here? You don't want to add any color to that. That's, that's the side of the birdhouse, and if you leave that on there, it's going to give you some more dimension. So when you're adding color to these little openings, just do it next to that little 
those little lines. And then we can come back in again and really darken the inside. I'm gonna take some more of this now and I'm gonna add some shadow to the side of this birdhouse. And that's gonna set it back a little bit. And we can add a little shadow underneath here and here as well. And this, because this is kind of overhanging here, this would be in the shadow here. And I always say that, um, you know, when I leave things white, you never want to leave it uncolored. So a white is always going to have some shadow on it. So it's always better to kind of mess it up a little bit, add a little color to it. This under here is going to have a shadow like that. And any of these little vines that are coming across here, you could put a little shadow on here. And then also down on either side of the post. little things. And then if you want to take some of this, actually let's take the tiny, the little fine tip. So this is a, this is called a twin tone. It's the same blue as the one I just used and it's really good for, uh, for details. So it has a very fine tip and I'm just going to come under these little decorative um, areas here and along So you can really see that, see those dark lines. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in the little birds. And I'm going to use a positioner. So those of you, if you've never used a positioner before, the one that we have is very tiny and it is so nice because it's easy to travel with. And it's a piece of acrylic like this, just clear plastic and an L bar like this. So you're going to take that and place it into the corner and then you're going to take your little stamp like this one and I'm going to ink this in the dark brown. And put it flush into the corner and now I can see exactly uh, where I want to place this little bird. And I think maybe I want him up here. And now I've got him exactly where I want him. So let's do that again with this one, the little guy that's flying. And I can turn this now and use another corner. And maybe I'll put this guy right here. And these, you want to stamp these very lightly. You don't want a lot of um, color on these. You want them very light. And you can see on this one, now I didn't get the line here, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to take a warm blue now. So this is a 526, a warm blue. Place that on my palette. So let me get this back over here. And the first thing we're gonna do again is pull the color out of the lines because we've just stamped our basic image and really keep your brush dry. You really don't want too much water for these tiny, tiny little lines. They're just tiny. So now I'm gonna take my number one brush. So we have three sizes on our website, a four, a one, and a six. 
Uh, if you if you have if you don't have a brush, a four is the one to start with. Then a a one and then a six. So for the majority of the projects, a four will do will do the majority of the projects. But when you're doing tiny little things like this, it's really nice to have a tiny brush. And you're going to do sections. So see his little wing? You're gonna do each one separate. And brush this on and just keep it really light. You can go back over it again and darken it, but you want to keep it light to start. And starting out with this brown, it just makes it look more three-dimensional. Uh, things that are just stamped, you know, if you were to try to do this bird and just stamp it in the blue, it doesn't have enough depth. It just doesn't have enough depth. That's why it's really important to stamp things in these colors first and then add your color to it. So I'm just adding some more of this color, just taking my time. You can always go back and add a little more color. And if, if it's dark, if it's too dark, keep pinching your brush off and go back to it. Just keep pinching your brush. Okay, and now I'm going to take a twin tone. So there, this is the brown. We have three colors um, on our website. We have the blue and the brown. These are the two that everything starts with, and a green. So I just use these three the majority of the time. And, it is, and it's because they have a very, very fine, fine tip. So now I'm going to just go back in here and darken the little beak and the eye. And you can see that really, really um, pops things out to do that. Okay, that looks pretty good. I mean, are we finished with this? It looks like it. You could take your, um, your little pink or your bright color and you could add a few dots in here too. That's always cute just to give it a little different look. Let's see if I forgot anything on here. You can go back in and add anything, any details that maybe you've missed. So now that I've, I've done this, I might just put one up over the top like this, just a little vine and maybe one going down. You don't, you know, when you're doing an accent like this, you can leave it because you've got all this going on behind it. So you can add a little accent at the very end if you want to do that. The last thing to do is sign and date. That is hugely important uh, because every time you do these, they're going to be different. This is your own work. It doesn't matter that you're using stamps. This is your own work. And you will be amazed at how these turn out. So let me hold this up here one more time so that you can see. The grass is down at the bottom, the little flowers. It doesn't take much. And you're going to use these same things over and over again. Now let me show you uh, the newest ones that we just, we just released. And they're a little different. So these are these are our scenes. So you can also create things like this. This this is called a simple scene. And here's actually what the stamp looks like. It's a little creek. And and what it is, it's a scene that's been already um, put into perspective for you, so that you can see where to add things. And of course, there are lots and lots of things that you can add into here. But it's all sort of done for you as far as perspective. Now you can take that scene. And you can add things to it like this, trees, little structures, flowers, uh, foliage in the background. Here's another version of that. This is the same one, 
This little bridge is from another set. These are all from different sets. You're buying these things as a collection, and the more things that you get, the more options you have. Here's another one. Here's a larger bridge from that same bridge set. Here's that same creek with a larger structure. Here's a snowy one. So here's the same creek, the same one, only it has a snowy scene. This was for Christmas. Here's another one. Same creek, same idea. These are all on YouTube, and there are tutorials that support all of these on YouTube or on Facebook so that you have lots and lots of inspiration and instruction. So these, are, these were new with this release. Uh, I think they're very helpful for people when you're trying to figure out where to put things and they do have illustrations. Again, this is what's in the this is what's in the set. This is a single stamp, but look at the illustration. It's got structures, it's got people, it's got all these little uh, foliages in it, grasses. Those are all from your beginning sets and additional sets. Here's another one. You can see how it kind of winds up again. Here's a very simple one. Super, super simple. And you can see how that all goes together. This is a set of trees that I used in that first one. Here's a little barn set. These are all brand new from our newest release. Little barns and the cows that create this little fence. Here's that little town. These are all on sale, you guys, right now, 35% off. And these tiny little foliages that create all these little um, borders back in here and these tiny little trees. It's just so fun. So if you like doing scenes like that, there are options and there are things that you can do uh, besides doing these big florals. So we try to have a lot of everything. Here's another one. These are made with dyes. These are all on YouTube. Here's another one. Uh, recognize this stamp. This is the vine. And this is the filler flower back in here. Another one. Here's that same flower I used. Here's the vine. Here's the filler flower. So they're just used in different ways. But you're going to go back and use these over and over again. So the two, let me tell you again, here's the two I recommend that you start with if you're brand new, flowers and foliage. Here's the one I used. Here's the grass I used. Here's the vine I used. So you'll use those over and over again. 